KETV Newswatch 7, chronicling the stories impacting our community. Stories making a difference. Stories that matter to you. This is KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. With the right leadership, the future of Omaha is bright. It's a future of growth, progress, optimism, diverse ideas, and a strong community bond. That's why I'm running again. And after four years at the helm, Omaha Mayor Jean Stothard says she's just getting started and she wants to keep the city moving in the right direction. Well, good morning, I'm Rob McCartney and this is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Today is our final show dedicated to the mayor's race in the primary April 4th. Over the past month, we've talked with each of the candidates in the race and all of those chronicles are online right now on KETV.com. This morning, we're talking with Omaha Mayor Jean Stothard. First, a few facts about her. When she won election in May of 2013, Stothard became the first woman to lead the city. Over the past four years, she reduced the property tax rate twice, hired dozens of new police officers, and grew the city through annexation. Now, she grew up in St. Louis and graduated from Seattle Pacific University with a BA in nursing. Then she worked as a critical care nurse, head nurse, and department head of cardiovascular surgery at St. Louis University. That's where she met her husband. They moved to Omaha in 1993, and once here, Stothard volunteered in her children's school. She was appointed, then elected to the Millard Board of Education, where she served 11 years, including three as president. In 2009, she was elected to the Omaha City Council, representing District 5 in Southwest Omaha. Four years later, she ran for mayor against Jim Suttle. At the top of her to-do list then was the budget and union contracts. We talked with her the day after she was elected in 2013. We have to have a good work I've place. made a lot of promises and pledges, and now it's time for me to go to work and to deliver, and I'm ready to do it. And that's what Mayor Stothard did. During her last State of the, speech, State of the City speech, she said the city is stronger than it was four years ago, but admitted there is more work to be done. We started four years ago with a vision to make Omaha safer, to make city government work better for you, and to grow our economy. And we have done that. With homicides at a 13-year low, the first tax levy cuts in 14 years, and 12,000 more jobs in Omaha, people believe we are on the right track. Mayor Stothard also talked about creating inclusive communities, redeveloping the riverfront, creating a streetcar system. And she was one of the first to cast her ballot in the primary. Last Monday, we were at the county election commissioner's office watching as the mayor voted early. And joining me now to talk about that and more is Mayor Jean Stothard. Thanks very much for being with us this morning, Mayor. Okay, as we pointed out a moment ago, after you won the mayor's race, you said, I've made a lot of promises and pledges. Now it's time for me to go to work and deliver, and I'm ready to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think you've done what you've promised? I think we've delivered. Yes, I do. The main promises that I made is I wanted to, um, in, um, I wanted to make the city safer and stronger. I wanted to get control of the city budget, which was a mess when I became mayor. I wanted to negotiate the labor contracts, union labor contracts. Wanted to control spending, reduce property taxes, reduce the tax burden grow our economy, and I wanted to make city government run more efficiently. And I believe that we have delivered on those. Now, do we have more to do? We certainly do. But I believe on the things that we really promised, that we have made great progress in the last four years. And I believe our future is only brighter as we continue to move forward. One of the things we've discussed and, discussed and will probably continue to discuss yes. is the restaurant tax. Absolutely. Your stance. You know, I, I made the choice when I was mayor to reduce the property tax burden before the restaurant tax. When I became mayor, I said I want to reduce the tax burden. And if you recall, the previous mayor, Mayor Jim Suttle, raised property taxes 14.5%, as well as had the restaurant tax imposed at 2.5%. And that was the right decision to make. 30% um, of the restaurant tax is paid by out-of-town guests, but every business and every property owner in Omaha pays property taxes, and that is the number one issue on people's minds right now in Omaha as far as taxes go, and especially with the Turk ruling a year ago that raised across the board valuation 7%, and recently what Diane Badiato, the Douglas County Assessor, did by raising valuations. People's property taxes are going up because of the valuations. So the city of Omaha showed we did our part. And I've reduced property tax rate, the levy, twice as a total of 4% since I've been mayor. That was the right decision. 
Restaurant well, let me, let me tax ask you is this, still though. on my mind, though. Right, the restaurant tax. Yes. And, and Heath Mello called for a 1.75, 1 and 3 quarter percent cap on growth in the restaurant mm -hmm. tax revenue. And it says mm -hmm. if revenue exceeds that growth, then the tax would be reduced accordingly. Mm -hmm. Is that a good plan? I don't think so because of this. My goal is to reduce and eliminate the restaurant tax. He is saying he wants to keep it in place and just cap it. And so my goal is, will continue to be to reduce it and then to eventually eliminate it. That's what I want to do, and that's what my goal will still be. What's eventually? When you say eventually eliminate it, do you have a time frame, number of years? Right. And, and, and of course, it's all a balance. It's a balance mm -hmm. with the budget about what you want to fund in every single city department. We only have a finite amount of revenue coming into the city every year. Now, most of the city's general fund budget is funded with property tax and sales tax. That restaurant tax is only a very small portion of the general fund budget, let about 8%. And so I felt like it was most, much more important to, uh, to reduce the property tax first than the restaurant tax because the restaurant tax is discretionary. But still, it is one of those occupation taxes, and it just targets a certain industry. It hasn't hurt that industry. So I felt like the best decision for the taxpayers and the businesses was property tax. Now, restaurant tax, it is a goal. And as I continue to do the budgets, and I will, I'm working on 18 already. It takes me about a year to do the budget. As you know, the, the all fund budgets of over a, almost a billion dollars. It's around 900 million. General fund, about 370 million. I am always very carefully looking and balancing about what I want to fund, like those more police officers, more uh, funding for the roads, with the amount of revenue I can take out of the budget to reduce taxes. Let me ask you this, and as you're looking at the budget, um, is there fat still in the budget? And how far can you cut? What would you cut before you start cutting into the muscle? Right, and that, that's what's important about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have really shown that we have run the city much more efficiently. I will tell you, if people say that there's no fat in government or no excess spending, I would be the first one to tell you that they are wrong. But I've really tried hard to control spending as well as reduce taxes. Every year that I've done the budget, I've kept the general fund growth at 3% or less. That's really controlling spending. And with that, we have been able to hire more police officers, more people in public works, put more money in roads, because we are running very, very efficiently. When I became mayor, I looked at every single city department, every single position, and I wanted to make sure that every position that we had in city government was necessary. That's why we're able to do all of these things that we've done and lower property taxes and keep the spending low. Let and so ask you this, this is careful budgeting. What would you cut then? Is there any, would you put a warning out now to somebody that, hey, you're on my radar, that if there is still fat mm -hmm. in the budget? Mm -hmm. No, and you know what? I don't like the words cuts because I think we have shown in the last four years we haven't done a lot of what normal people or average person would call a cut. What I have tried to do is run much more efficiently, modernize City Hall. And another thing that has really benefited the city of Omaha is the annexations that we have done. As we continue to annex, and we have annexed over 27,000 more people in the city of Omaha, it has been so budget revenue positive for the city, we are broadening the tax base right now. That's the way that you can lower taxes and sustain the lowering of taxes because you're broader, broadening the tax base. More people are paying into it. That annexation that we have done has been so positive for the city. It's one of the reasons that we are receiving such good bond ratings now. We also have a lot more bonding capacity than we've had in the past. I put about $130 million more in our capital improvement plan, and a lot of it went to roads. And we had that mainly because of the annexations. So that's the way we're growing our city. We're broadening our tax base. We're able to lower property taxes. And at the same time, we are running more efficiently. Now, tangentially to that, the, mm -hmm. the annexation, uh, Sheriff Tim Dunning, Dunning talked about he had concerns with the annexation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the, that there was slower police response times. Response times in general were an issue. Uh, and a week after he makes that announcement, you come out and say, hey, we're going to have a fifth police precinct. Now, I know, I know uh, Chief Todd Schmatter had been looking yeah. at that since the get-go. I mean, you've been looking at that for years. We've been looking at it for years. But the timing seems really suspect, does it not? No, it doesn't. And it, here's why. And that is, number one, the annexations are done extremely carefully. It's the same pro process we've used for years. But when we do annex, we assume the debt, we assume the assets, mm -hmm. too. And we look over a 10-year period, and we account for the cost of city services every year for 10 years, including fire and police. 
We want to make sure we have enough fire and police and we can pay for all of those services. So that's very, very carefully thought out. We right now in the city of Omaha are almost at the gold standard for the number of police officers. Gold standard is two officers per every 1,000 citizens. Right now we are at 1.92. And when we raise it up to 900 in 2019, which is Chief Schmatter and I's plan, we will be at two per 1,000. Response times out west are very, very good. Um, as we continue to grow and we continue to add more police officers out west, the Sheriff's Department has not reduced their number that are out on patrol. So there's very good coverage out there. The issue is, is that the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department have always had a mutual agreement that we help each other. Other agencies use Omaha Police Department all the time uh, for our, our calls, responses, um, for our dogs, our canine crew, for our SWAT team, for our helicopters. We help each other. And so to say that the response times are slower out west because of annexation, I would say that is not true at all. Now, with the 5th Police Precinct, Chief Schmatter and I both have been working on that for three and a half years. We have been working on the boundary lines, where it will be. It's very strategic. We look at response times, growth patterns, crime patterns, and we were ready to announce it, except we did not have the site chosen yet. We were looking at our gun range out there in Elkhorn because we own the property already, but we found some more property in a much better site, right, out, right off of 204th Street, very visible. And we chose that site, and the reason we did the press conference when we did is I just signed the letter of intent to buy that property the night before. Yeah. We were all ready for a press conference, but I signed it the night before so we could announce then the next day that we have the site located, identified, we have the letter of intent signed, and that's why we did it the next day. It had nothing to do with any political moves by any opponent or by the right. sheriff. Let me ask you this, uh, just briefly, uh, politically. Mm -hmm. uh, was it, is it a slap that uh, Sheriff Dunning is supporting your opponent? Well, you know, I, I have always had a good friendship with Sheriff Dunning. He supported mm -hmm. me the last mm -hmm. time. We had a good relationship um, since I've been mayor, in my opinion. In fact, I remember in January of 2016, we did a press conference in my office on human trafficking. And Sheriff Dunning had talked to me about it and asked if we could do it in my office, and we stood side by side at that press conference. Um, things started to turn when we started the discussions at the Med Center about merging the crime, crime lab. lab. Yep. And that's where things turned. But I will tell you, in all of those meetings, we had nine of those meetings, there was a lot of professionals around the table during those crime lab meetings. And I don't think anyone will tell you at the table that they weren't handled very professionally, um, myself included. And everybody was for the merger of that crime lab, except Sheriff Dunning and, and a few of the county board members. And so I think that it was just, it's kind of a matter of, of a turf war, unfortunately. I think the same thing about the annexations. You know, we, the city of Omaha continues to grow and we continue to get bigger and Douglas County continues to get smaller. And so, but we shouldn't be looking at that. I think we should be looking at what is best for Omaha, what's best for the whole area and what's best for our citizens. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. Let me ask you another question about uh, politics, campaign finance reports. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. some of the latest numbers uh, detailing donations for the first two months of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, Heath Mello nearly tripled the amount of money that you raised. Uh, he brought in just over two hundred sixty-four thousand mm -hmm, dollars mm -hmm. uh, compared to your ninety-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But you, at this point, at this reporting time, had more cash on hand, a nearly two hundred thousand dollar advantage. Right. What's that say to you? Well, it says that we've done our job um, fundraising, and I have raised now about one point six million dollars. Okay. Um, it, for my re-election campaign. And so we, frankly, had the money that we need to get us through the primary. So I didn't want to keep on asking donors for more money because we had pretty much funded our campaign. Now, we will continue fundraising because as we go into the general, we'll need to fundraise more, as we always do. But we didn't want to keep on going back asking our, our donors, and we have many donors. And if you look at my donors, it's a lot of the business and philanthropic community. And then we have multitudes of people that just give small amounts. So my donor list is huge. But we wanted to make sure that we were asking for money when we needed the money. And so when you look at the total amount I raised as compared to the total amount um, Mr. Mello raised, um, we have out fundraised him by a large amount of money. So you're looking towards the general, so I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. it's safe to say you're pretty confident and you'll, you'll make it past the primary. 
Well, I'm certainly hoping that. And, you know, we don't take anything for granted. I will tell you, we do polling a lot, and we know where we stand. We use those internally. We take nothing for granted at all. But we do know that the majority of people in the city of Omaha feel like the city is going in the right direction. Okay. And they're happy with the way the direction that we have, have, have gone. All right. Well, it's time for us to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Mayor Jean Stother, talk about the city and where it's going as far as economic development. That's when KATV News Watch 7's Commitment 2017 Chronicle continues. You're watching KTV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Joining us this morning is Mayor Gene Stothert. And I want to ask you, pothole snow removal, banes of almost every mayor I've ever known. Yes. There's a road in Omaha, part of Leavenworth. It was actually ground down to gravel several years ago and left that way as a cost-saving measure, reportedly. Does that speak well of a solid road plan? No, and that was a uh, practice that was started by the previous mayor, Mayor Jim Suttle. And he chose to do that when there were some streets in Omaha that had deteriorated to the point that he felt like it was no longer fiscally responsible to keep on filling the potholes. So he started this practice that's called reclaiming roads mm -hmm. and would come out and grind them down to gravel. I don't agree with that. And so I have put a moratorium on that practice because right now, what I, I really feel strongly about is we have approximately 5,000 lane miles of road in the city of Omaha. About 300 of those lane miles are called unimproved roads, or they're not up to city standard. They don't have concrete, storm drains, curbs, sewers. And so I have a committee together that I feel like the city needs to take more responsibility for those to get them up to city standard. Um, in the past, the practice was if people on those roads that were deteriorated uh, want them up to city standards or just want a new asphalt overlay. They would pay for it all themselves. The city would come out and do the work. They would pay for it themselves. I think it's part of the city's responsibility to pay for it. So the committee I got together of stakeholders are coming up with recommendations to me, but my suggestion was if they want to go to concrete, pay for 50 percent the city. Um, they, they have a certain period of time to pay us back. It used to be by state law 10 years. I'm trying to get that changed this year to 20 years. And if it's an asphalt street, at least some partnership with it. But in that interim, I wanted to stop that practice of reclaiming roads because I want people to know they have other options. Now, if somebody wants it, if somebody wants their road ground down to gravel, as long as everybody agrees on that road to do it, I'm okay with it, but I want to let people know what their options are. With that, we have put a okay. lot more money in the budget to pay for that too. I want to ask you about also economic development. Yes. Several projects seemingly stalled. I mean, you have Civic Auditorium, Crossroads, Riverfront, Midtown Crossing is struggling a bit. Uh, Boys Town Development out west. Too many irons in the fire? Oh, no. And these things aren't stalled. I mean, typical multi-million dollar developments take a long time, and they're dynamic. They change from the original conceptual design. Um, Civic Auditorium side is not stalled at all. We're ahead of time. We have just finished the demolition. We're still cleaning up the site. But there site. was a change in plans. I mean, but going that, from all commercial to possibly something else. No, it was never all commercial, well, though. a ton of it. It was, it was mixed use because mm -hmm. we put the RFP out ourselves, and okay. it was a mixed use development. It had commercial, it had retail, it had residential, and it had office, and it had a civic component. Okay. That's what was in the RFP. We did it internally, and that's what will be there. Originally, there was an office tower there, and there still could be, but it, we ha it has to be market driven. And so we just met with the developers of that project just yesterday, and we are actually ahead of schedule. Um, they're going to be doing their application sometime soon, and it will be a great downtown mixed-use development. I want to put a new downtown library there. Crossroads, for example, I met with the owner and the developer about two weeks ago. Um, it, but sometimes you have to realize with these big projects, the city says what incentives we will do, what we can do, and then it's in the hand of, of the developer. We will do whatever we can to make it work, but we have to treat all developments fairly, too. So, so what happens to a crossroads? Crossroads, the developer and the owners still tell us that that, pros that project is going to move forward. And it will still be a mixed use with a lot of retail, with some residential, with some office there. They've changed their plan several times. The city is a good partner with them. We offered to pay for some of the public infrastructure within there. We offered to support the, the use of TIF there, for example. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's in the hands of the, of the developer. You go down to ConAgra, too. ConAgra is not lost. You know, they still occupy three of the five buildings down there. And uh, they have a tremendous 
mixed-use development plan for the ConAgra campus. I've seen it. I know what it looks like. They're probably going to announce it in the summer. I need to let them announce it, but I will be there with them. So these projects are moving forward. Will you ever get anything done on Riverfront? Yes, in fact, we have a great uh, group of business and philanthropic leaders. Mayor Walsh from Council Bluffs and I are on it. And we are taking that portion that we own, the city owns, from the Bob Carey Bridge down and in including Heartland of America Park and then over to the Jean Leahy Mall. That's property we own. And we, um, with private money, we've hired a consultant, or we will hire a consultant, to come out and give us a design of what best works in that area that will bring people down there all year round. And this is not something that's pie in the sky. This is something that we are actively working on right now, and we'll get it done soon. And we have developers very interested in the Gene Leahy Mall, not to take the mall away, because that's our little central park. But to make it more usable, perhaps have some restaurants down there, um, a walkway, a pathway around it, maybe some water taxis in it, just something more exciting to bring, bring people down that area all the time. Well, tying it all together, then streetcar, is that feasible? Is it doable? Is it a waste of money? No, I think it is if you look at it the way I do. And I look at it as economic development and jobs and to relieve congestion. You know, in the early 60s, we had 21,000 more jobs downtown. We could get those jobs back downtown, but we can't park 21,000 more people. And so if you look at it as public transportation, not a trolley car, not a tourist attraction, but something that actually moves people from their homes to their jobs and back to their homes again in the evening, it will help spur development all along that route where that streetcar is. But you also have to look at it is the initial route what we're looking at now. And you know, you gotta walk before you can run. And we have plans to have a streetcar line that will go to North Omaha, South Omaha, perhaps down to, to uh, the zoo, uh, down to office. Those are all in the future, but you gotta start somewhere. I would not support it if I did not truly believe, and I know we can do this without a property tax increase. The people that will benefit the most uh, that are along the route will pay the most for it. Perhaps an assessment district around the area where all that economic yeah. development is going. They could put some part of their TIF that they will get towards the streetcar. Um, but I believe it is very good for the city and it will just be a part of a new modern transportation system. But I wouldn't support it if it caused a, a property tax uh, rate increase. Okay. Well, we're going to be right back with some final thoughts. First, a reminder, your comments are an important part of the show. If you want to be heard, email them to news at KETV.com. Remember, we love to hear from you. And we'll be right back. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. For the past 30 minutes, we've been talking with Mayor Gene Stothert. Don't have a lot of time left, but we want to give you a minute to make a final plea to the voters. Absolutely. Well, um, four years ago, we started out with a very clear vision. And that vision was, is we are going to improve public safety. We are going to get the city's budget under control. We're going to lower the tax burden. We're going to no negotiate labor contracts. We are going to grow our economy and we are going to make city government work much better for you. And we have done that. The city is now safer and stronger. The lowest number of homicides in 13 years, the lowest number of shootings in a decade. We've had uh, straightened out our city budget. We've lowered property tax rates twice, negotiated all the labor contracts, first time in 10 years. And our economy is growing. There's been over 53,000 building permits at a value of $2.7 billion since we've been mayor. And that is because people trust the leadership and the city government is running much more efficiently. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve as your mayor for the last four years. And I would be honored to have your vote to continue for another four years. Thank right. you. Mayor Stothard, thanks very much for being here with us this morning. You bet. All right, remember, you can find all the shows we've done with the mayoral candidates online at KETV.com. Just look for the Chronicle tab. It's on our homepage. You can click it. It's on the menu bar. And don't forget, the deadline for voting in person at the election commissioner's office is Monday, April 3rd. Primary is the next day. The general election is May 9th. I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.